The book of Psalms 8 verse 4 and 5 says, What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than Elohim, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. It's such a great relief to know that God is mindful of you and high. And on this note, I welcome you to Touched by Faith. My name is Olufunke Owo. Right now, God's word is coming to us by our Father in the Lord. Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. One of the ways to be close to this God, to know him better, this God that is so mindful of us, is studying his word, listening to his word, praying several other ways. So together, let's listen to the word of God coming to us right now. Mark chapter 1. From verse 40 to 45. Mark 1, 40 to 45. A leper came to him, worshipped him. When you talk about somebody who is locked down, <laughs> a leper is a classical example. A leper is supposed to live in the bush. It's not, it's not allowed to come into the congregation of the people. When he's coming, he must ring a bell, telling everybody, a leper is coming, get out of the way. As if when he's coming, to come and pick food from the dustbin. One day, this beggar said, I'm tired of being a beggar. I'm tired of being locked down in the bush. I'm tired of suffering. And he took his life in his hand, came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And fell on his knees and worshipped him. And I said, I know you have the power to lift me up, to make me clean. The Bible says, even though it is contrary to the law for the high priest or the priest to touch a leper, Jesus Christ said, I will. And he touched him. Now, one of those very interesting stories in the Bible. He told him, keep your mouth shut. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> and the leper said, thank you very much. How can I keep quiet? After what you have done for me. As someone listening to me, nobody will beg you to witness from now on. Yeah. Nobody will ask you to praise God from now on. Yeah. In fact, what they will be saying is, hey, take it easy. Amen. And you will be telling them, hey, you don't know as I know. You don't know from where he picked me up. Let me conclude. We will continue next Sunday by the grace of God. You know, David says something in Psalm 30. From verse 11 to 12. Psalm 30 from verse 11 to 12. When you read that passage, what is actually saying is that God is able to turn your mourning to dancing. Provided that at the end of it, you will praise him. Is able to turn your lockdown to leaping up, provided you will spend the rest of your life praising Him. By the unction of the Holy Spirit, by the unction of the one who called me. Even if you are at the gate of death, today I decree that you leap up. Yeah. Even if you are in penury, I decree that you would leap up. Yeah. Even if death or hell is already waiting, say, ah, we got this one. I decree that hell would lose his hold on you. Amen. 
Welcome back. God's words that has come forth to us today shall do wonders in our lives in the name of Jesus. For more messages by Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye and for past episodes of Touched by Faith, kindly follow us on any of our social media platforms or visit www.redeemersnetwork.tv. You can also get to watch us on Roku TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV and Apple TV. Or better still, download the app. Exodus chapter 1 verse 19 says, Okay, let me just paraphrase. The Hebrew women said unto Pharaoh that the Egyptian women, they are not like the Hebrew women because the Hebrew women delivers even before the arrival of the midwives. Mrs. Oluwatoki was told that due to a medical condition, she can never give birth to a child on her own. But guess what? Even in the absence of doctors, in the absence of the professionals, she put to bed, she brought forth her baby without any help. What God cannot do certainly does not exist. Meet Mrs. Oluwatoki as she shares with us how God himself was the midwife who took her delivery. I'm Oluwatoki Mojibola and I attend uh, Emmanuel area at Agbadu. Lagos province 50. My salvation experience stayed since 1999. I've been functioning in the choir and technical department. Presently, um, I function in the children department. I lead the children and I also you know, work also in the technical department. Yeah, music and technical, so, but majorly children department. My testimony started around, I think, June 2021. You know, I was not feeling fine. I went to the hospital and you know, I was told to go and do tests. I found out I was pregnant. I complained. The doctor treated me, but I wasn't feeling better. I went again. They gave me another medication. I was still feeling better. At the point, I told her to call my mom over to come and stay with me so that she can help me attend to my children. The third time I went to see the doctor, the doctor said, Madam, <laughs> do you want to finish our medicine? We don't have anything for you again. Just go. I like, but I'm not well. I'm, I'm not getting myself. He said, we've done what we can. At the moment, just go and keep managing yourself. So, the other day I took my children to school, and I just wanted to get something for them. The second street, I just crossed a very narrow gutter. How I found myself inside, I, I didn't, I can't even comprehend till today. And I had a deep cut. The bleeding was much. I was also going to work that day. I work around facilities. So I was going to General Hospital Eco that day. I would go and complain. You know, they treated the wound and I was given an antibiotic. So I took the antibiotics I was given. I took it back to the doctor. Ah, doctor, this is the antibiotics they gave me. And I asked, is it okay for me to take it because I'm pregnant? He said, yes, it's, it's not too powerful for pregnancy that I should go ahead and take it. And when I started taking that medication, I felt better. It was not like as if, you no, know, um, it was arranged for me to get injured and, you know, be given that medication. The pregnancy progressed. So I registered for my antenatal around October. I was told to come back, I think, one month later. And if I'm coming back, I should do a scan. I did scan December 1st. I when I saw my doctor, the doctor was like, uh, do you know what, um, have you heard about placenta previa? I said, placenta, I've never heard about it before. That uh, this would be the first time I'm hearing it. And she said, um, I have low lying placenta and uh, with the way it is, I should just, you know, start preparing for maybe cesarean section. I said, wow. Within me, I said, thank God. There's an opportunity to go for a program. December Lagos Congress um, 2021. So I said, as I'm going to camp, 
I want ability to go do that. God, this is what I'm giving. I was being given on the Wednesday of the Congress. I went to work. I drove down to Ijedai General Hospital. As I was coming back, you no, know, I just noticed that the car I was to drive, you no, know, started developing overheating. As in, within the space of I think one kilometer, just very, very, or like <laughs> the devil is a liar. Oh. This car must take me to where I was going because mobility was also a challenge for me then. So I took the vehicle for repair. I said, okay, let me start going to camp. That should be on Thursday now. My mind is already going to camp and I must get there. Before they finish fixing the vehicle, it was around five. So around six in the evening, I turned back to the technician. He said, I can't do anything. I said, please, just help me look for, as in, let me find the solution to it. So he just did something. As he was doing, I was praying, God, this vehicle must be okay. I'm, I'm, I must get to camp this night. I now left. It could do around past seven. That was on Thursday evening. I sat down, I prayed, and you know, I said, God, the theme of this um, program is the siege is over. Lord, let every siege over my life be over. That he came up to minister, and it was very difficult for me, but I just made sure I knelt down, as he knelt down, and you know, daddy prayed, he finished praying as I was standing up. You no, know, I just felt like a shift. I was like, and I told my parish mommy. Then I said, ah, "Mommy, my as in I've gotten what I came for. God has answered me." As I did my did this scan, it was 31 weeks and I think some days. And the research I I did, you know, said the. Um, possibility of the placenta leaving the um, OHS was after 32 weeks, as in there is no possibility of the placenta moving away from the entrance of the cervix. So I was like, this can only be, as in, if I'm going to deliver, uh, as in, and with the way the pregnancy was progressing, I just need God intervention. January 4th, I still seen sign of um, delivery. My husband was around, so we both went to the hospital. The doctor I saw, she said, you're already having sign of contraction. Like I said, as in, you want to deliver, you want to put I said, but from your previous scan, we can't touch you. So they admitted me, they gave me some injections to stop the contraction. So I spent some few days and they didn't want to do it. Oh, please, I'm very okay. Let me go back home. So I went, they disturbed me after some few days. I came back home. The Sunday before I you know, put to bed, you know, I, I still prepared food. I ate little and I went to sleep. I woke up around um, past two. Because the, that Monday was my antenatal um, clinic. So as I was beating, I didn't even feel any sign of um, labor or anything. My dad drove and we were going. I sat down beside him. I felt a pull. I, I, I just, I was not feeling, you know, my, I was not just feeling that okay. I was, I was not trying to hold the baby from coming out. The next thing my dad was, just said was, ah, is that not the cry of baby? I said, is the baby out? I said, yes. He said, I just said, sir, just keep going to the hospital. In, my dad just started singing. He said, ah, what of the placenta? I said, don't worry, I'm okay. So that was how the baby came out with the placenta. What came to me was the fulfillment of the scripture. It was, I, do, I said, God, on the day of my delivery, water will be enough and the blood will be enough. And I will deliver like an evil man. You know, you know, like I used to say it, but you know, when it really happened, I was like, this is just God. Because I never imagined that I could actually give birth myself. <laughs> Even without any assistance. Me that I was told that I, uh, I'm going to deliver through serious sanction. And even when I had signs of delivery, I went back to the hospital. They told me they can't check me. When we went back to the hospital that I was admitted, we, I went to do a scan. When I did the scan, the doctor said the placenta is still blocking the entrance of the cervix. So definitely, 
medically speaking, there is no way I can give birth, even myself. So the baby now coming out without, as in just delivering like an Hebrew woman is, is just the hand of God. Um, I just want to give all the glory and all the honor to God because he really made the siege that the enemy planned over my pregnancy period. He took it away and he proved himself mighty. I said, may the name of the Lord be glorified. Um, that's why I brought my baby to God, dedicating him. Miracle, Ishe Oluwa, Ezekiel, Oluwa Toki. I pray that the name of the Lord will be glorified over his life continually in Jesus' name. Um, Dickness, Yetunde Ogumbuide. I'm the mother of Mojibola Oluwa Toki. Actually, she got married sometimes in 2014 and she has been having babies. The only thing is, when she's pregnant, even she will not see until when the stomach comes out and the, she does not have a big tummy. Before you know it, she will deliver. I've never experienced a state how pregnancy does with her because she was on her own. The only thing is when she delivered, they will congratulate me. I will go to her. So this time around, this baby room, I really experienced. And she didn't tell me anything until maybe later in November ending or December. And mommy will be praying, you know, I say pray for what? Because she's the type that she will hold herself until that thing is really shooting her. She now said she was going for the Congress. The team, the siege is over. I think she went on Thursday or so. She was working in Antipolo, so she went together with their pastors. He didn't tell me what really happened. So until January 2022 that we finished, she said, no, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I want to go to the clinic. It's like, so I said, what happened? So the husband was around. They both left. So I was now calling. But I said, they have put her down. So what happened? Say nothing. I think the fourth day, they discharged her. She came on. When she now came, I said, what happened? Say they said, they, they can't touch her. That this, this she was now narrating for me. Say, all this thing is happening. I couldn't say. Actually, whenever they are on state, even my daughter-in-laws, I'm always on with them. So, until the very day of on the 17th of January 2022, in the midnight, she was to go to clinic in the Korodu, the General Hospital in Korodu, that 17th of January. So, she was preparing that she, on, on Sunday 16th that she would go on Monday 17th. I was people, she just came and with me. And then eh, she now used her hands to carry her belly up. I say, what happened? I say, eh, I should call that. I should call that. I say, call that. So I called him. I called my husband. I say, it's like she wants to put to bed. She say she come and drive her. Actually, she will drive herself to the clinic to deliver. Even when she deliver, she will drive home by herself. I will be at her side. The husband will be there. She will drive. I will only carry the baby. So this one that she now said, Daddy should come and drive her. When she was high on her, she said that around one, two, the baby starts contracting. When Daddy now came out, Daddy said they should go to one nearby hospital near us here at Ija Eropta. She said no, that she's going to Ikorodu based on what she has been experiencing and what the doctor has said. That is better with the good hands that I've known her details. As they are driving, that is, so I say, she said, Ikorodu, take her there. So as they are going, I couldn't call. My uh, the junior sister was still at home, preparing to go to work. She, she can't go. Me too. I was looking for the thing, the other children. I can't do anything. I was just praising God. I was just praising God. Until around six thirty, I couldn't call Daddy. Daddy is the one driving. I can't call her because of the state she was. So, until 6.30, or 25 minutes to 7, exactly. Daddy now ran. His phone now, I now pick. He said, she has delivered though. I said, praise God. I was just rolling on the floor. Praising God. I said, okay, uh, Kinobi, I don't want you to show more. So, um, the other, you know, so we now pray God, praise God, pray together. Then that one left for our office that day. So, I now called daddy back. It was then I heard that the attendant, the hospital attendant was asking him. 
a question. And I said, I'm the one who brought that woman that delivered. So later we start um, talking. I asked Daddy what I said. She delivered in the vehicle while going at a gege. That the bridge or under the bridge, I don't really know. Now I look up and say, God, you are faithful. With all this lady has said, and she could be able to deliver herself. Even me that um deliver that I have, have children. I don't have the strength. I don't even know to what to do if the baby is coming without any assistance. And she was able to, I said, God, you are faithful. You are a miraculous God. So that day, everybody just speak the name when we give the boy. I just, I said, God. And within the other time, I was to celebrate my sister's birthday. So I couldn't do anything because of how she was doing. Even I was not planning for anything. But immediately the baby came out that 17th of January, because I was born on 21st of January. So I said, I have to mark my birthday because this boy, God has done it so easy for us that we have cost to thank him. So I don't want to glorify God because all glory, all honor, all adoration be unto him. It's the only God that can do it. It's only God. If not God, what? Will the enemy will say of us when we thank God that God is really standing by us? So I really appreciate God for what He has done concerning her, concerning our deliveries, even concerning the remaining children delivery. God has been so faithful; it has been so easy, and it continues to be easy in the mighty name of Jesus. All I need to say, Daddy, I glorify Your name. Praise the Lord. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. You have listened to the testimonies, and I believe that the God that we serve is no respecter of persons. What he had done for others is more than willing to do for you. But before you can begin to enjoy the kind of miracles, signs, and wonders that you have heard during this testimony time, you must surrender your life to him. Miracles are for children of God. And so if you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ right now, you just bow your head. I will pray with you and the Lord will save your soul. So shall we pray now? My Father, my God, you know all things and you can see all things. You can see these people who have listened to the miracle walking power of the Almighty God, what it can do in the life of people. And they say they want this kind of testimonies too. So as they are surrendering their lives to you now, Father, please receive them, save their souls, and Lord God Almighty, let your blood wash away their sins. And from now on, Lord God Almighty, anytime they cry unto you, answer them by fire. Very soon, let me begin to hear their testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let someone shout hallelujah. Before she got to the hospital, she delivered a baby, pale and hearty. You could see for yourself, the mother is alive, the baby is alive, bouncing in the glory of the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Touched by Faith. I am Sula Lufunke Owu. Why don't you join us same time, same station for another power-packed edition of this wonderful program. Until we come your way again, never forget that God is so mindful of you and I. I see it far, I go far, I do more, I am more, not by my power, not by my might, but I am powered by God. Spirit of God Yes, I ride on the wings of the Spirit of God Woo! Redeemers Network Television